35. 30, 35? 30, 35. 30, 35. 30, 35. 35. 35. 35. What? 35. I'm starting this timer. We've got 35 minutes to make a difference in the world. 35 minutes in episode 35. That's right. One minute per you episode. Make... I hope you... <laughs> I hope you realize that there will be no difference making in this world. That's right. Earthbound will always be there. It's like hell. You you try and try and try and you're just never gonna get anywhere. Yeah. Keep rolling that boulder, Sisyphus. You'll get there. Speaking of rolling boulders. Uh. Uh. I thought you said speaking of rolling boulders. I, I expected some boulder rolling to to happen. All I see is, is... Curiously, when I push L on the top of this rock, it doesn't say there's no... Oh! Oh, I guess there was no problem there. Um. Hey, what's up? So what um, do these douchebags want? Uh, they're all shy, which I think means... Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm shy. Well, thanks for explaining. I will be sure not to put you out. Hotel here. Hey, buddy. In the hole, in we have. Yeah, that's what she said. I apologize for that. I'm, uh... I'm ashamed of myself. Um, you've had it coming for a while. That's... what? She... oh! <laughs> Damn it! Let's call her mom. That's Stop what mom. she said. Oh. oh, wait. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, my... I mean, my, my sister said that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in a very platonic sort of way. I certainly hope so. Where the... Where is this... Alright, so here's what I've gleaned so far from the one... The one among these dinguses who is not shy. This dude says we need to move this rock to get to the dinosaurs, but this guy is the only guy in town strong enough to move this rock, but he lacks social skills to accept us telling him to move the frigging rock, I guess. So we have to find so, some kind of book that'll make these dudes have nads. A book? That, yes. Oh, hey, that, what's up, butterfly? That seems pretty... How did you come to that conclusion? Somebody else mentioned a book about becoming, like, becoming assertive. But doesn't Rob Z just have a gun? <laughs> like, <laughs> just point the gun at the green guy and make him do. I have a bat for God's sake! I could just take a couple of these guys out. Just be like, Look, I mean, I'm gonna keep hitting people. Oh, being shy doesn't seem like any real guard against fear, right? <laughs> I mean, in fact, they're already fearful. We just have to make them fearful of more things, which doesn't seem like it'd be very difficult. Answer uh, the phone, hello? damn it. Oh, hey, what's up, Apple Kid? Uh. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, God. Apple Kid. Oh. <laughs> Shut up a minute, Apple Kid. I got another call coming in. Oh, thanks for your call, Apple Kid. It's oh, hey, it's Orange Kid. I just... Hi, it's Orange Kid. I just murdered Apple Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Slit his friggin' throat. We're coming near to our research on uh, <laughs> Apple Kid's intestinal system. By the way, Apple Kid is missing. Dude, how do you know? He just <laughs> now went missing. Oh, man. <laughs> this Orange Kid, Apple Kid thing is getting... Getting way too rugged for me. Ah, Apple Kid has overcoming shyness. <sighs> Whatever. For God's sake! <laughs> Dad! Your time is just... People are trying to monopolize you here. <laughs> you need to get like a secretary or something. I just need to throw this, Naomi. this phone into the garbage. 
You can carry this phone, Naomi. I just need to find a place wide enough that'll allow me to use my teleport move. Shut up, tree. I think I, I think I, I maybe can do it in this area. Shut up. Shut up. All right, let's do this. Uh, sigh. Teleport. Ugh, your mom can't teleport here. Maybe you have to be in the overworld. Maybe it just doesn't work anywhere else. No, you did it in the uh, department store, I remember. Yeah. And Maybe well, they said we can't do it here. One of those, like, existential roadblocks in, you know, it just, just doesn't work here. Yeah. And you know that because it told you. How do you know it doesn't work? Did you read the script? Oh, wait, we, we decided to stop calling attention to the fact that we're not as good at making fun of shit as those guys. What? Who are what, you? What, what guys? No. Who? Damn it! Oh. Uh, why do you become black? Uh, what, I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something racist, but I can't because it's racist. I was going to quote Go Boonox. for it, man. <laughs> black people lack the strength of character to teleport, Andrew. <laughs> Um, Let's go to winners. This, okay, I was, I was gonna ask if it only worked horizontally, but that a little while ago, that like monkey or whatever was able to change direction while this is going on. Maybe we can make like, a, a circuit or something. I'm gonna try it one more time. Teleport. Let's do this. At least it only costs two. Yeah. Plus, there's a. Aha! Oh. Advanced techniques, you baby. Quick about it. Yeah, it's gotta be quick like a bunny. Try, if, if, get going, and then try to run into yourself like in that game, that snake game. <laughs> that one didn't even really get off the runway. In fact, it just kind of exploded in the hangar. All right, let's do this. You lied a second ago when you said you were gonna try this one more time. Shut up. Oh my God, I'm. Just... Ugh. I don't want to walk around this suck-ass swamp, either. Alright, I think maybe vertically is our best bet here. Well, like, like as soon as you start going, uh, m make a right, then then do like a loop. Okay. And loop back around. Try that. That was a good try. I think maybe if I, if I just roll my thumb around the, uh, the D-pad, it might be... I might be able to just go in circles. Yeah, try that. I teleport. Take me to winners. Alright, I made it a little farther that time. I, I think that's a good plan. I think you just need to, to work it out. This area might not be big enough, too. I want to see if I can just change direction on a dive. If I can just go back and forth and still pick up speed, that would be cool. I mean, you you did at least one complete loop. If you can just keep that going. Yeah, I'm accelerating as it's going though, so I'm having to go faster and faster and faster. Nope, you can't just change direction on a dime. Okay. Ah. All right. If this doesn't work, I think we're gonna have to go to a different area because I think there's an area that's that's almost long enough earlier in this area. I think we just have to get there. Take me to winners. Oh, ho oh, snap! Advanced I like techniques. how you got that at the, the very last possible moment. I, if you hadn't gotten it that time, you would have tried somewhere else. <laughs> at least that's what I like to think, because I like to think you're not just completely insane. I'm a, I'm a huge liar. Oh, crap, they're out of bubblegum. Hey, what's up? Is that, uh, uh, are you huge... And a liar, or are you a huge liar? Yes. What is that called? What's the word for that? Uh. Um, amphiboly. What? Well, uh, I, I mean, yeah, that that's. Uh, but the the name for oh, I'm not gonna remember now. What are you talking about? If I remember it, I'll bro. say it. I'll, I'll break it out later on in the episode out of nowhere. Okay. And, uh... 
surprise everyone with my punctual uh, remembering of the this this obscure term. Uh, okay. So many. Oh god, that makes his, his defense way worse. Categorimatic adjectives. Whoa, what? Are adjectives that depend on the order or uh, uh, ha have a, uh, a, a, a definite domain. Huh, interesting. Like, uh, when you said a, a lar- like a, uh, a large South American butterfly is, um, a no, uh, non- cate uh, sin categorimatic adjective because, uh, you, it's, it's unclear whether- Oh, is that how it works? Oh, never mind. <laughs> if we have any linguists listening to the show, they can write in. Yes. And, and tell us. Rufio's carrying a bunch of bullcrap in his inventory. Yes, I'd like to sell something. Please, for the love of God, let me pick three things at once to sell to you. I think this is a good a good case for our uh, previous discussion about economics. Oh yeah. So, what would be this guy? What is the value of the goods this guy is carrying? Uh, about one hundred and forty-five dollars, looks like. All right. What is that in in terms of his journey? What is his uh, uh, what is it marginal utility curve look like? Oh, are you talking specifically about the thing we talked about before? Or are you just making up nonsense? No, I'm, not, I'm comparing what we're talking about now to our situation. We didn't talk about it on the show. Yeah. We talked about that. Well, the we had a we had a uh, uh, a question. We had to define the uh, utility curve of a man who has to travel 100 miles and needs 100 units of food uh, to make it 100 miles, and if bandits stole three units of food, uh, what would be the marginal utility of the food he had remaining? And we figured it would be zero. Yeah. It, it gets weird because it's not a question about marginal utility as it is so much just about, like, algebra. Yeah. Or, that's uh, what you, as a, as a economist, were able to inform me. Refer to me as Dr. Economan from now on. Or don't. I don't, I don't care. You know the economenclature. That that was that was a real stretch. I'm I'm sick to my stomach. I'm going to vomit directly into my pants. Well, Thanks. I've got this uh you know deadly nightshade here, so I'll <laughs> just uh, take a sip of that. Dude, we're going down to the amphitheater. Where we're gonna do hemlock shots all night, bro. <laughs> That's my uh my Socrates if you were a frat boy. Which, uh, Socrates undoubtedly was a frat boy because a fraternity in ancient Greece was a, like, a uh, defined political unit. Awesome. This pleases me immensely. Do you think he wore a popped collar on his toga? <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> this is wearing black socks with his sandals. Also, uh... It's worth noting that in ancient Greece they did not wear togas, so it would be equally as appropriate for Socrates to go to a toga party and put on a bed sheet. <laughs> what did what did what did Greeks wear? What was their like? Uh, did they have like some kind of, any kind of national costume? I I I don't know it's robes or tunics or I, I'm sure there was some like ancient Greek version of a of a suit. But uh, it was not a toga. I, th I think national costume of Greece is just naked and oiled up. <laughs> well, if you're a Spartan, you know, those Spartans. <laughs> uh... 
There's a lot of great uh, jokes we could make about ancient Greece that we're not going to go into. For example, if you were from the island of Lesbos. Yeah. Yeah. Good old. Good old lesbians. Hey! All uh, those poor lesbian men who have to live that down. Or rather, don't have to live that down. Huh. They're having to, to just exist that down in <laughs> Hades. Or, uh, uh, what do they call the, uh, what do the Greeks call the afterlife? Um. Uh, uh. God. Tartarus. That's the one. Wasn't there an episode of my. Oh! Was there an episode of My Little Buddy that obliquely referenced Tartarus for some reason? Uh, they, they had the, uh, 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 Cerberus. Oh, uh, yeah, he just sort of shows up one day. He's like, hey. It was like, it was a nothing plot point. It was, it was there just to, to be, it was a trick. It was like, oh my god, here's this giant th monster, and it just gets handled. It's like it's like one, oh, one yeah, smash right. cut, and then the issue is resolved. <laughs> so, one thing that's so, so great about about well, one of the great things about that show, it's like oh yeah, this this horrible, dangerous thing shows up, and it it's just handled, <laughs> and then something completely completely quotidian like we, we have to have a slumber party is is a real <laughs> a real problem. You know? Forget about the giant three-headed monster destroying town. I've got real goddamn problems. My friends don't want to come to my birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a giant monster smashed my house. You think you've got problems? <laughs> Asshole. Who do you think you are? So these aliens on screen are reminding me of how, uh... XCOM Enemy Unknown. Oh man. Cheats. Does it cheat? The game cheats. It cheats. Does the game just get does it cheat or is it just really hard? I I'm I'm quite convinced that something is going but it might be a matter of of I'm not uh specking my guys out correctly, or maybe the the enemies have uh, a power that I don't know about. But uh, I do not understand how I can have a 95% chance of hitting a guy, then having an 85% chance of hitting him, then having another 85% chance of hitting him, and miss all three times. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in fact, you can the, calculate out exactly how unlikely that is. It's pretty... pretty well, what would that be? Uh, so, what, what would it be? 95 times point. 85 times... So, uh... Assuming all three things are independent, uh... They are. Yeah. Then you can just multiply the percentage chance of each thing happening together, and that's the the probability of that specific order of, of events happening. So it would be like 0 .05 times 0 .05 times 0 .15. Yo, yeah, what's up? Sebastian was kidnapped. There's a bunch of people missing. If we see Tessie again, I'll poop myself. <laughs> oh god, I hope we don't see Tessie again. <laughs> Ep episode would end pretty quickly. <laughs> oh no! Fade to black. Or maybe, you know, fade to brown. So, uh, because I've, I've decided uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown cheats, I have uh, given up on that game. And I'm starting up the sequel. Why calm? Enemy <laughs> casually acquainted. <laughs> is, is the third game going to be Z calm? <laughs> Enemy intimacy? No. Okay. That's absurd. Why would you even suggest something like that? I apologize. That would never. You would never be able to market a product like that. You don't want to get intimate with some sectoids? Because those chrysalids want to get intimate with you, dude. Uh, hey, what's up? He has some chewing gum! The enemy in the in <laughs> Even 
found in video games, chewing gum really satisfies. Well, have some chewing. Everybody freeze. Oh, yeah, that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, end of the episode, folks. Go hey, wipe yo, off Baxter. <laughs> How you been, girl? It's eyes. Look at its eyes. <laughs> What, one time I just want to come over here and see that monkey, and then Tessie and the monkey just leave and don't come back. It's like, well, that's that. They're having I their guess. own. They're having their own little intimate moment. <laughs> I can't move my neck. <laughs> Y'all know Tessie a hoax, right? Tessie, don't say that. If, if she gets just a little further out of the water, you see the, the like, treads underneath. <laughs> I can't come up on the land, because that would ruin the magic. I, we're, we're just going along the coast. I mean, we could have walked over here, you know? We are, we are we unable to, to get... surmount small rises in the earth, so we have to ride a big, retarded purple dinosaur. Uh, it's a plesiosaur. Thank you. It's not a dinosaur. Uh, Bye, some Tessie. kind of joke about pleasing your mother. Later, Tessie. Oh. Well, that was uh, that, a that waste was of time. We're talking about a waste of time. I mean, we're progressing in this ridiculous game. Oh, man. Oh, little saucers. Oh. oh, wait, no. Oh, we haven't seen that thing on the left before, have we? No, but I'm going to kill it immediately, just in case. Does it have two eyes or two mouths? It's a woolly shambler. I think those are eyes. I'm going to set them all on fire. Because that's how we do it in my neighborhood. Uh... Whoa. Uh, just punch one of them in the face. Huh. Have at you. None of these things are weak. So I have a- I have a proposition for you. Shoot. Or- or rather I have- uh, it's a business proposition. I want to start- I want to develop a new type of video game. That doesn't have video. Are you talking about some kind of audio game? I'm talking about live action gaming. They have that. That's a thing. Not like I'm thinking of. Are you, Where you hold a controller and you have a bunch of people up on a stage and whatever you you command, they they just do it. Okay. Imagine, okay, so, so think about the development of the technology, right? Yeah. How, uh, we, originally we just had plays, and, uh, so now we have television shows, which are basically like plays that you pre-record. Well, if video games are like pre-recorded something, then they can only be pre-recorded live-action games. Mm-hmm. So I want to get a bunch of actors up on a stage and hold a controller, and whatever I tell the, I tell the characters to do, they just act it out. When you said pre-recorded television show game, or whatever, I, I immediately thought I started thinking about FMV games, and how absolutely magnificent they are. You know, and, and furthermore, why don't they have video games of, like, classic literature? Why don't we have a Hamlet the Game? Do we not? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we do. I, I'm I'm not exactly sure. I've never heard of it. It certainly wasn't very popular if it exists. I mean, but... I mean... I can't think of something that would lend itself better to a video game. Well, maybe not Hamlet, but maybe something like, you know, other classic literature. Where is A Farewell to Arms, the game? 
I think I tried to read that book once. Wait, that's a book and not a play, right? Yeah, it's a book. Okay. There's probably a play about it, too. You know, they adapted everything into a play. Yeah. Where oh. is... I mean, think the Iliad, the game. It's all fighting. <laughs> it's an action it, movie that people used to do on a stage. Whoa. It's... Well, I mean, it, it's like a brawler, you know? <laughs> Except instead of that's controlling when... one dude, you control an entire phalanx. Well, that's just an RTS. <laughs> no, I mean, you just you push left on the joystick and the, the phalanx oh, the moves to the left. Moves. Yeah. And when you pull the trigger, they all stab with their spears simultaneously. Instead of hit points, I, I, just dudes die. I hope you realize that at the time of the Iliad, in the... Uh, Minoan, the age of Minoan Greece, the phalanx was not a thing yet. Oh, really? How did they, what, what was the, how did they fight? I, I don't know exactly how they fought. They used stuff like chariots, you know? Huh. Uh, in, in the classical era in which the phalanx was developed, chariots were like a, were an archaic thing. They were only used by, like, pretentious Persian generals and stuff, and not for the purpose of fighting. Fascinating. I never knew that. Like, were they still equipped like like classical hoplites were? Like, you know, you get your big-ass shield and your really long dory? In, in Minoan Greece, no. What a, hmm. Do you know what, like, they, arms oh. and armor they used? This is still the Bronze I mean, they Age, had... though, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they they had they had like plate armor and stuff, but it was uh, uh, you know, yeah, made of bronze. <laughs> and uh, well, that's a uh, a new one on me. Uh, oh, you can't see my screen, but uh, the screen that we're recording, uh, one of my friends on Skype uh, just commented. He said boobs, and so now that's part of our show forever. It's so Wait, I didn't dude. see that. Well, you're not you're not seeing my screen. But this little Skype notification window just popped up. Thanks. Thanks, oh. Willow. Thanks for your contribution <laughs> to my life. Have I met Willow? No. Is that the person, is, is that the redhead girl you, you, you knew back at school? Redhead girl. She lived in Tennessee or Kentucky or something? No, that was Nina. Oh. So who's Willow? It's some random person on the internet. Oh. I'll, t I'll tell you more about Willow when we're not uh, before an audience. Anyway, oh. um, what the hell are we talking about? Uh, live action games and how the Iliad would be perfect as a brawler. Word. But that there was no... Oh, oh hey. Uh. Soundstone? Soundstone? Ooh, yeah. This is a really long cutscene. It's really boring. Your other three characters sort of inched forward just a little bit there. Whoa. Hey, check it out. Rob G's health is ticking up. Maybe this happens every time you get a soundstone. You've just never been low on health before. Huh. Interesting. Why is, why is there water only falling into that little pool? Uh, that must be the this. That must be what this area. Oh, it's called the Rainy Circle. Hmm. There's that foot. There's that petri dish full of bacteria. There is. It's the Milky Well. Come on. And what's that last one? The Rainy Circle. It's this uh, thing. Oh, that's very hard. Well, hey, neat. I feel like uh, we're gonna get we're gonna start getting these a lot faster now, because I was reading a uh, walkthrough a while back and uh, was informed or got the impression that we are over halfway through. Nice. I'm uh, I'm gonna beat the dog shit out of this bear. Hey, what's up? Oh no, not bears again. He's mighty bear We've number had bears. seven. What's our time, anyway? You have a dedicated timer now. Yeah, we've been doing this for about 30 minutes. Okay. The timer has five and a half minutes left. 
Uh, uh, so, uh. so we... You set it for 35 minutes? Yeah. Perfect. So hopefully we'll, we'll get to Apple Kid before this is... This is over. Shut up! Oh, so, uh, in Minoan Greece, at the time of the Iliad. So, uh... Hmm. So they weren't in the phalanx. Uh, actually, uh, the Iliad happened during the Mycenaean period, not the Minoan period. Oh. I, uh... I, I spoke incorrectly at first, and because it's continued to, to come up, I couldn't help but Look correct it up. myself now. Well, no, I didn't look it up. I just, just I, as soon as I said it, I was like, Ugh, well, but I didn't think it would become an issue. But now it has. Use your eraser, eraser. I don't have that yet. Ah! Go, don't cock to Apple Kid and get it. Orange Kid's got it. Come on, get your head in the game, Andy. Don't you realize that they're the same person yet, and they're trying to deceive you? That whole bit, that whole bit about the phone call and Apple Oh my kid. God! <sighs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, oh. so the, uh, the Mycenaean period came after the Minoan period. Oh, okay. What's the place I mean, the Minoans it, are from called? Is it... I always screw up the name. Crete. Oh. Crete. This doesn't even sound like Minnow. Well, it's, in, uh, it's named after Minos, the, uh, king of Crete. The mm. legendary king of Crete. Who was also the guy who... Uh, trapped Theseus in a labyrinth and made him fight a minotaur. Let's be fair, it was a really easy maze. <laughs> it's like, walk straight. Okay, now you're done. Now fight this giant bull man. Alright. What was the name of the, what was the name of the woman who who helped Theseus out of the maze? Andromache? Was that it? Uh... I don't- I have no idea. Yeah, it, it was, was the Eraser Eraser. It, it, it was either Andromache or Andromeda. One of the two. I know Andromeda's a thing, because we named a... Space... After... Her. Is the galaxy Andromeda. Yes. You know. But before it was a galaxy, it was a character in Greek mythology. Yes. But we don't know which one. on the wall? Wait, go back. Is that symbol in those three lunettes on the wall? Uh, those aren't lunettes. What are those things called? Portholes? Those oval, oval thing. Well, anyway, is that the same symbol that's on your soundstone? Uh... We might be in the midst of a puzzle. Let's do this. No. Third one. Oh! Damn it. Never mind, it's not. Nothing about this game is that clever. If there's ever a solution to a puzzle, the solution is usually to get a thing named the solution to that puzzle. E.g., I found a big eraser in the way. I'd better go get the eraser eraser. As you will soon see. Well, yeah, we already... I, it's down there. But you don't have the eraser eraser yet. Man, you don't even know what I have. Because you haven't been paying attention. Wait. Oh... No, I was... Oh... <laughs> snap. Wait, where what? I, I totally zoned out there for a minute, apparently. <laughs> well, we went in that lab and a mouse gave this to us. Blap. Oh. Hey, what's up? Oh, it's a senior mook. I'm gonna cave his skull in with a baseball bat. Senior mook. Yes. Senior. The master wouldn't like it. Oh, God. OMG. He's on water fire and hypnosis. Uh, 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 uh. Life up. On Rufio, let's go. Get him! Yeah. I'm thinking that it during the uh, period of Mycenaean Greece, uh, like military tactics weren't really much of a thing. You sort of gang you up know? and charge toward the other guys. Yeah, 
P pretty much. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not real well versed in this period. I do, however, have right above this computer a book of Mycenaean art, which I'm picking up as I'm saying this. Nice. So you can find some pictures in there of dudes. What? Oh! Oh! It's mostly, mostly pots. I can. Oh god, it's a starman. Some little statuettes. There's a bronze bowl. I'm gonna hit it with some hypnosis. This really makes a good, uh. You know, audio. Me looking through this book and describing the pictures in it. Sing! That all went very well. Certainly took that Starman's task. Starman, huh? Yep. Wasn't that a Rush album? Was it? No, it, it, it was the cover of the Rush album had a man with a star thing on it. Oh. It wasn't called Starman. I read somewhere on the internet the other day that uh, Rush was in some way significantly, like, inspired by Ayn Rand. Huh. Quite possibly. I mean, a lot of those, like, sort of, uh... Well... What wasn't, uh... What was Anthem about? You read that, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, crap. Wasn't, wasn't Anthem, like, sort of a dystopian future, uh, thing? Okay, con uh, concentrate on this. No, it's, I, I just, just, that was never gonna happen in time. Um. Yeah, in Anthem, it's like, there's a, it's, it's like a 1984 kind of world where there's, like, an all-powerful state that has taken over and has totally gotten rid of the, the very concept of individuality. And this, this dude, like, rediscovers it. Because he's... I mean, that's... that's yeah. you're, the, tw 2112 is the soundtrack to that book. Oh. Well, that's handy. You, you heard 2112, right? Of course you have. Uh, never from start to finish. Well, you don't need to hear hear the entire album. You just need to hear the first couple of songs. Oh. Uh. Naomi. Couple life noodles. Also, there's that song, Free Will. True. I will choose a... I'm not gonna try to imitate Rush at all. You can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. ba na 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 if you choose not to decide. Okay. I apologize for that. I'm not Great sorry. Great though. This time I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm gonna drop a bomb on him. Well, a moderately sized bomb. It's like a crazy. Uh, shoot these jokers. Wait. I got in my goodie bag. I'm gonna use my snake bag on him. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a whole use bag your snake of snakes. Bag. Oh, that's stupid. Uh, punch him. Burn him. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of fighting these guy. things. I know they're kind of. A I don't want to fight these things anymore. I'm tired of these things doing, like, 50% of my health bar of damage in one go. They don't just shuffle the enemies so you can get some of the enemies from the other worlds. Yeah. Like those flying paintings from that godforsaken moon world. <laughs> oh, stop freezing my people, you dick. Also, Lars, please stop missing constantly. Like a punk. So, I've... Uh, I was watching those things on, uh, The Escapist, those, uh, review, what are they called? Zero punctuation. That guy who had, 
Yeah, he has a yellow background, and he has, like, a little fedora yeah. on his character. Yeah. Um, I was watching those, and apparently that guy appreciates this game quite a bit. Yeah, he's, he's, everyone's real hyped up about the third one never getting a release in the in, in any of the, the U.S. or the PAL territories. Which is real dumb. But, may, maybe it's just nostalgia. Maybe people just, like, this was, like, the first game of this kind that they ever played. Maybe. I, I don't... I don't much care for it. Hmm. I don't like none of this. Wasn't that silver thing the first boss? Yeah. Except it's sort, of, sort of like a bitch-made version of it at the time. If they could make a better version, why would they even make a bitch version? <laughs> because in video games, everyone follows the sorting algorithm of evil. <laughs> you get all the hard ones last. Yeah, you get all the, you send all the chump troops in first, so that the the heroes will face a steady increase in danger and excitement. And you will lose the maximum amount of soldiers. Yeah, but you're evil, so you don't care. <laughs> Indeed, you're not <laughs> only evil. Your evil doesn't only extend to your enemies, but extends to your own purposes as well. Yeah, that's like the whole thing. Have you ever read the Evil Overlord list on the internet? No. It's, uh... Recite it. There are hundreds of entries, and I can only remember a few of them. But, uh, Recite the ones the, you remember. They're all, like, rules to live by for supervillains. And one of them is like, I will keep a five-year-old child on staff at all times and have him review my, <laughs> my evil plans. <laughs> and if he finds any holes that he finds, will be fixed immediately. Uh, like uh, one of them is, uh, I will have my my imperial weapons uh, manufactured to hold one more shot or cartridge than standard, so that when the hero tries to <laughs> defeat me using basic arithmetic, he will fail. It's it's just a. a... But wouldn't he know that? Wouldn't wouldn't he know that they have one more? No man, it's a secret. Only if you but read he the already list. knows your secret. He already knows your secrets because when you captured him and dangled him over a, a pool of sharks for a while, you explained your entire evil plan. No, see, because that's on the list too. One of the, one of the entries is uh, if the hero is ever near to death uh, and says, "Wait, don't you just want to? Won't you just, before you kill me? Won't you just uh, t like tell me why you're doing all this?" And it says, I will, I will say, say no, and then shoot him. On second thought, I will shoot him, and then say no. <laughs> and it continues in that fashion for several hundred entries. The first couple hundred are really good. Uh, what, what, is it, what are the rules about stupid costumes? Like, can you have... Uh, how should you style your eyebrows as a, as a supervillain? I don't think there were any specific rules about eyebrows... But there were rules about, like, my costume will be close-fitting and any extraneous capes that might get caught on machinery will be eliminated. <laughs> what about, what about headgear? Is there any... What if you have a mind-control device on your head? Like, this is how you not to take it off? <laughs> I don't know about that, but there's one, there's one that says I will not attempt to consume any kind of energy field larger than my own head. <laughs> uh, that's classic. It's an atomic I don't think we've ever seen that one. thing in the back. No, I don't think we've yeah. ever seen that one. Pop I wonder who designs these robots anyway. That looks like a pretty inefficient design. It's it's a ball, and it has tentacles. It's like that stupid thing guess... in Mobile Suit Gundam. Oh man, that thing really ate it. I don't remember that thing in Mobile Suit. What there was like a little that? green ball thing. So I was hanging out with that kid. Oh, his it was yeah, uh his like R2 D2 yeah. thing. Oh god. Pop Remember that You remember that show Battle of the Planets? No, that sounds awesome though. It what well, it, it was uh uh G Force. 
Oh, yeah, totally. Really cheap science it team's was... gotcha man or whatever. They, uh, uh the, the show that we know as G-Force was just a sort of touch-up version of Battle of the Planets. Nice. But, uh, yeah. That, that show, uh, it was retitled Battle of the Planets because at the time Star Wars was really popular and they did all they could to make it more like Star Wars. <laughs> That's awesome. They even they even added a robot character to that show that was not in the original. What? Who was the robot? There was a there was a robot character that start like started out every episode and and gave like a a summary of, of the situation. I don't remember that. I'm gonna freeze do, this robot, I mean, though. do you have particularly vivid memories of that show? It's not a particularly memorable show. I I do remember some stuff about G Force. It was a pretty generic, like five man band show because they always resolve their problems the same way by getting in the big ship and then shooting missiles at the problem until it was dead. <laughs> Which, you know, as ridiculous five-man band shows is, is more straightforward than most. It's like, hey, here's a problem. It's like, you know what? The ship is loaded with problem-solving missiles. Yeah. I, I, I like their costumes, though, yeah. in that in that show. But like Especially the, the, the beats the... that were uh, sort of like... Yeah. Buzzers. I like the girl's costume the best, because she was like a, a duck or a goose or something. <laughs> I think if a chick is dressed up like a bird with yellow beak, I think you should automatically go with, like, Oh, baby, you look like a beautiful swan. And not like, what are you, some kind of duck? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty inefficient helmet design, though. It does not conform to your rule about close fitting and... They also, uh, it's... They, they also wore big, ridiculous, uh... Uh capes, but at least those serve the function of letting them glide. Yeah, they can fly. They can just flap those capes and fly, which is, they didn't use that power enough. Yeah. They spent too much time in vehicles. It, everybody had their own just... like, little vehicle, too. It's like a... They all fly? And there was a there, there was a long animation of the vehicles all, like, assembling into each other. They'd all get they inside like a big plane, it's like why didn't you just bring the big plane? The big plane can go, like, Mach 3, dude. Well, they had to get to the, the big plane was already en route, and they had to get their other vehicles to it. Oh, I see. That all makes pretty That's, good anime sense. I mean, their, their vehicles are also just like their getting around vehicles. Yeah, they're just hanging around in your ridiculous superhero dirt bike. I mean, the plane isn't gonna, like, come pick every one of them up <laughs> before it goes to meet its enemy or whatever. Dude, you have to carpool to the plane. Let's go. <laughs> I cannot come around and pick you up again. But also sort of begs the question of why they aren't all just in the same place anyway. <laughs> so why don't you guys just hang out at HQ? They've I mean, all got they like, going on. Like in their apartments or whatever, you know, doing their own thing, and then it's like, oh, we got a call from Space Command. Hello, we Mayor. To... <laughs> uh, the one thing I remember really vividly about that show is it's actually like it was originally a two-parter episode, but I never saw the second part. God dang it! Sorry, this thing keeps healing itself. It's really annoying. Alright, I'm going whole hog. Eat it. Pop. You wouldn't think that that freezing a robot would have any effect, you know? Yeah. I feel like a robot would be the would work better the colder it was. It's an atomic powered robot though, so who the hell knows what's going on in there? Uh atomic scientists. <laughs> Nuclear engineers probably know, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they might have a, a pretty good idea of what's going on in that nuclear robot. So if you're a nuclear engineer and you'd like to tell us what's going on inside that nuclear robot, just send us a postcard at uh, P.O. Box 
New York City, New York State, 101108. What? I'm, what are you stick stickly now? Yes. Except I'm more like I'm I'm real fat, so maybe I'm like s cylinder pork porkly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. At least those things are total chump change. Uh. Yes. Did we name Pokey? No, he was. He came from the factory oh. that way. <laughs> they didn't, I feel like that's a name that we might have chosen for one of these. They, they didn't trust us to come up with some next level shit like Pokey and Picky. <laughs> oh, I for, I forget who's Picky. Picky is Pokey's br uh, younger brother. We haven't seen him in quite a while. Yeah, he shows up like the very beginning and then never is a factor ever again. Oh, he's not so far as we know. Yeah. Alright, uh, shoot Starman, and then... Freeze him! Oh god, we're all gonna die. Anyway, the, the thing that always, uh, stuck with me about, uh, G-Force was the, um... It was supposed to be like, it was a two-season show in Japan or whatever. And, uh, the, 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 the two-parter that separated the seasons was, like, there was this race of crazy people swallowing plants that were taking over the planet they lived on. I don't remember if it was Earth or not. But, um... The... I don't think it was Earth. I think they had, like, a silver castle and all yeah. kinds of non-Earthly things. We could have a silver castle here if we wanted. We just don't want to, right? I don't think we have enough silver to have a whole castle. Shows what you know. Anyway, it might it might have it might have been made of like stainless steel or something. Who knows? That'd be a hell. That'd still be a hell of a lot of stainless steel. At any rate, it might have been made of some like like sci-fi material, yeah. uranium or, or whatever. What do they make stuff out of since Star Trek? What is this, what is the Star Trek Enterprise made out of? Uh, tritanium. Iron, right? And uh, no, they got it's tritanium. <laughs> yeah, it's just. <laughs> They got a really big cast iron boiler, and uh, you know, the engineering crews down there shoveling coal pretty much 24/7. Okay, tritanium. I think that's their, that's their science fiction material du jour in, in Star Trek. Um, okay, but uh, about about the uh, the man-eating plants, Battle of the Planets world. Yeah, yeah. So they, they had these plants that were eating folks, and one of them ate the princess. Is this like what? What is this like the Pokemon that is a uh, what's it called? Uh, Victory Bell or Weeping Bell yeah, or whatever. Victory. Yeah, was it? Were they like that? They, they were huge and they looked kind of like tulips, I guess. And they would they would subdue you somehow with some kind of like pollen that would make you sleepy and then they'd eat you. It was it was a real bad like scene. Like in uh, uh, what's that musical? Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Um, yeah, a little shop of horrors. Was it like that? Did they sing? Uh, no, they were just evil. Or they were just, maybe they were just doing what they were doing. I don't think they were evil. Anyway, key thing is, princess gets eaten. Only way to kill the plants is with deadly fire. And so at the end of the episode, they end up like, they have the big argument. It's like, we have to save her first. It's like, there's no time. And so they end up just firebombing the whole, the whole field. And... Everyone believes that they've killed the prince. Oh, for Christ's sake. You know, okay, I I'm gonna pause you for a minute. I don't think she actually is a princess. I think her name is just Princess. Oh. Like, because, you know, in the beginning they give that whole spiel about they were all orphans. Yeah. That that were, like, trained as, as these super soldiers. But if she's a princess, she can't be an orphan. Like, the... By, by its very nature, being in a princess implies a, a rather significant parentage. Maybe she was uh, adopted by the the royal family because they couldn't but, have then babies. Then why is she why is she fighting wars? Why isn't she like being a princess? Because somebody's got to do a, it, man. Oh crap! Ooh, that one's gold. About to take down C three PO. Oh, Have you seen that start to call that... halt to this? Yeah, we're we're getting pretty well over time now. I better start getting overtime for this. 
I'll, I'll give you a time and a half. Shit. Damn it! So you got hard all this. Oh shoot. Uh, goods. Uh, eat this picnic lunch. He's good. God damn, you're still counting down. What did he do to you? Uh, he reflected my my powerful psi attack. You're not. It's not working. You're not catching. Oh there. Oh god. Uh, get him. Got it. Naomi's gonna be okay. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh crap. Both of them got it. Oh no! Get him! Oh. Whew. Okay. Yeah. Save. Call your mom. Mom, help! These ghosts. Call your mom. Get a hammer. Call a taxi. Get you out of here. Mom, call the police or the military or something. Tell them where I am. <laughs> oh yeah. Call the military. Dial. Dial. One eight hundred. Military. 2800, go army and uh, be all that you can be. Ah, let's have one cup of life noodles. I'm using on. Give it to. This guy. And I can go back into this fucking menu just to use this item on this lady. God! What? Yeah, what are you fighting? They just like jumped up onto this ladder I'm standing on. Awesome. Well, you're 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 done for. Yeah, we are totally screwed. Run away. Try it. Peace. And did. Hooray! Run, motherfucker! Apparently, you don't even have to hit something to to get into. Man, I think you're. Uh... Yeah, we need to. We need to do something. I thought, doesn't anybody know how to bring anybody back from the dead with Psy? Naomi, Naomi's the only one. Well, she's alive. She should know how to do it. But she doesn't? Apparently not. Does healing do Wait it? a minute. Here it goes. Hey! Oh, it's just... It's just healing three does that. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, now I'm, I'm glad I know that. I'll probably forget it before the next episode. Make a note. Carve it into your thigh. Tell boobs to uh, send you <laughs> a a reminder the next time. All right. Let's call it. We've been doing. We've, we're literally like 25 minutes over time. It's been this timer's <laughs> been flashing at me this whole time. <laughs> yeah, let's do. We might. Maybe we can edit some of this out. We have. We can finally have our ex executing our idea to have an intermission in the middle. Let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby. No, let's that, go that's out the, the wrong lobby. time to sit. Not in the intermission. Delicious things to eat. The cold drinks I, can't be beat. I already ate Let's dinner. go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby. And in this stupid show. I'll be damned if 